Hello everyone, Space Oyster here, and welcome back to Boletaria. In the last part, uh, what did we do in the last part? I think it was the Tower of Latria. If I remember correctly, it was the Tower of Latria. Anyway, yeah, we got through the second part of the Tower of Latria, dealt with the very difficult boss man-eaters, and in this part, um, we will be going to the Valley of Defilement once again. And you'll notice that I've got a lot of stuff here. Anyway, the Valley of Defilement leads to a huge swamp into which all that is unclean flows, becoming a nest for putrilage, vermin, and plague. Ah, oh, lovely. So, yeah, that's why I've got a pretty different setup for this next part. Uh, with the Valley of Defilement, you want to be prepared, because going through this part of it is very, very, very tedious and dangerous. And So, my equipment is, um, well, first and foremost, I've got the um, Adjudicator Shield instead of my usual Dark Heater Shield. Uh, since, um, like I've, I th I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it before, but the Adjudicator Shield, that, um, has a slow, um, HP regeneration effect on it. So, as long as it's equipped, you're going to regenerate hit points. Um, I've also got the Regenerator's Ring equipped to offset poison damage, because it's pretty much impossible to not get poisoned. Uh... Uh, you'll see once we get further. And finally, I've decided to equip the dragon's the dragon longsword that I've equipped, um, or that I found in Stonefang Part 2, and have upgraded since. Um, a lot of the enemies in the Valley of Defilement are weak to fire. I believe I've already mentioned that before. So, um... So the Dragon Longsword is definitely my best option for being able to deal with them. I think it even does more damage than my other weapons, and uh, that's include uh, even when you include um, uh, scaling and whatnot. So yeah. The safest way to get down is to take this part forward. They're kind enough to give us some Royal Lotus. A uh, coward should try this area later. Well, I am a coward. Just watch as I... Um, you know, yeah, let's just walk over and fight them. Anyway, the worst thing about the swamp, though, isn't that it causes poison. Like, the poison is bad, but it's not the worst thing about it. No, the worst thing about this swamp is that um, while you're in it, you can only walk, like, very slowly. Um, uh, the only time you can move at a normal jogging pace that your character would normally move at is if you, uh, sprint. So you have to hold down the, um, circle button, I believe it is. Oh, hey, they were nice enough to give us another regenerator's ring. Oh, yeah, anyway. Um, the only way you can move slightly faster is to hold down the sprint button, which will drain your stamina. So, uh, getting through here will take a while no matter what, because you are going to have to stop and let your, um, stamina regen, and then, uh, go back at it, go back at it again, and ugh. And, um, also, while you're in the swamp, uh, you can't roll. If you try to roll, your character will just, um, try to lift one of their feet up and then fail. So, um, don't go for that either, because it won't work. Anyway, let's try shooting these things. Hey, that does do- that does good damage. Although, it's not a good idea for me to be using the bow so much, because I have to unequip the Adjudicator's shield. And unequipping the Adjudicator's shield is a bad idea. Did that thing just teleport? Am I being invaded? I hope I'm not being invaded. I think it's just run of the mill lag. Yeah. Yeah, Demon's Souls is quite an old game, or at least the PS3 copy of it. So, it is possible that it does have some, um issues. Um, but if you also still have the Blessed Mace or any other Blessed Weapons, uh, it might be a good idea to have that as a main, or, or as a weapon to use in your main hand or your off hand as well, at least while walking through the swamp. You want to offset the poison damage as much as possible so you don't burn through your healing items. <sighs> but yeah, not much more to say about this place. Um, just that it's so decrepit and hor decrepit and horrible just because this is this this is the place where they decided to throw all of the garbage in the world 
Or maybe it's just Boletaria if this place is connected. I don't know. I asked some people who know more about Demon's Souls stuff than I do, and they did say that each of the different worlds connected to the Archstones is a different part of the world, so it's not all the Kingdom of Boletaria. Eh. So, the Valley of Defilement is probably its own separate place. It's, it's, it's a cesspool, quite literally. Eh, fun. Anyway, when you're adventuring um, through this area, you must be very, very, very careful of the Black Phantom that is patrolling out here. Um, the Black Phantom on her own, she wouldn't be so bad. Um, she's running around naked, and I do believe she has the... Um, meat cleaver that the you can get from the adjudicator shield but what makes her um particularly difficult to deal with is that she is not encumbered by this or inconvenienced by the swamp the same way that you are so unlike you she can run at full speed and she can dodge uh, so if you do end up trying to fight the black phantom that's out here, the best way to deal with it is to uh, two-hand your weapon and hit it. Oh, there she is. Um, oh, wait, no, never mind. She's not naked. She's wearing something. Oh, crap. I hope she didn't spot me. Run away. Run away. Run away! Uh, yeah, if it's not already apparent, I am a big coward, and I have no intention of fighting her. Um... Although, I do believe that they often reference that Black Phantom in later Souls games. Um, in Dark Souls, she's Maneater or Mildred that, uh, that can invade you once you get to Blight Town. Well, the bottom part of Blight Town, that is. And can later be used to, um, or later can assist you with the boss in Blight Town. Um, I forget her name. I, is it Quelog or Quelana? Anyway, uh, there are there is nice stuff out here. I do believe um, one of the items out here is the uh, cat's ring that will um, reduce the fall damage you take. So that is another useful item to have. And I'm not too sure of anything else that's worth mentioning out here. Um, the most interesting items in the Valley of Defilement that you can get... Um, come from world tendency events so i'll be showing those off later and yes i can guarantee that i will indeed be showing those off later oh yeah and the depraved ones the giant depraved ones they can't um they're not affected by the swamp either so uh if you fight one of them and lure them out into the swamp water you're toast Anyway, this is where you need to go just hug the left wall and you'll get here eventually and um uh, staying on this wooden path here will eventually, uh, will lead you to the next fog gate and, um, uh, progress. Um, let's see. As long as you don't fall off, then this bridge is going to be a very, uh, a nice reprieve from all the poison damage. In fact, I sh if I was smart, I would just heal it off so that way the regenerator's ring would be restoring my hit points. And then another new enemy type here are these giant mosquitoes. They will fly up to you and squirt blood in your face. Eh. Uh, they can potentially inflict poison if you're not careful. Alright, and uh, so, um, well, I guess them inflicting poison isn't such a big deal since you're going to be poisoned anyway, most likely. Um, yeah. So let's go ahead and heal, heal that off. Uh, I shouldn't have waited so long, but whatever. Whatever. Anyway, since there are so many depraved ones, I recommend um, shooting them like this in order to make the path easy for you to traverse. Um, uh, since the walkway is so narrow, and at this part, I do believe if you do fall down, you end up dead. So um, that is not a good thing. Uh, well, obviously dying is bad. Uh, anyway, beware of trap ahead. What trap? I heard I heard a thing. I heard a thing. What's going on? Wait, is that a hole on my left? Is there something up there? Uh, let's see, let's see. Wait. Uh-oh, that's not good. Oh, crap! Oh, crap. What are you? Who, where'd you come from? What are you doing? Oh my gosh, there are people up there. Um... Okay, let's run away. 
I did not know those guys were up there. Neat. Right, anyway. Ow! Yeah, the biggest downside to the Adjudicator Shield, of course, is that, um, well, it has a lot of big downsides, actually. Uh, since it is a great shield, it, um, you can't use it to, uh, uh, you can't use it to parry, it'll just, you can shield bash with it. Wait. Holy crap, there are more people up there. I don't know about that ambush spot. I think they're just constantly going to respawn there. I don't know. Anyway, let's run away before it gets too hectic. Good guy? What good guy? What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, uh, it also doesn't block 100% of physical damage, and its fire resistance is particularly low, um, which can be bad here in the Valley of Defilement, since there are some particular, uh, some very dangerous enemies that deal fire damage. Anyway, uh, if you don't want to walk along that bridge and fight those depraved ones, then, um, if... Then you can just go into the swamp immediately after going through that first fog gate, and then still hug the left wall, and you'll make it here pretty quickly as well. So, you do have options for dealing with this place. Wait, there's a message here? Beware of trap ahead! I don't know what you mean by a, by a trap, but there are mosquitoes! Stupid mosquitoes. Eh. All right, well, let's see, that one's pretty high up. Let's go ahead and shoot it. Yeah, unlike um, the Dark Souls version of the Valley of Defilement, um, which is Blight Town, um, the Mosquitoes, they don't keep respawning. There is a limited number of them. And then there are lots of lights off in the distance, but I would recommend be being extremely super duper very special careful if you decide to go and look for um, items and stuff. Because um, there are lots of uh, giant depraved ones uh, guarding particular items and you don't want to get stuck dealing with those. Anyway, these slugs, I think they're the same slugs that are in the, um, uh, not in, but at the... Um, no, it's the right word. The Shrine of Storms, the second world right before the, um, well, the second part right before the old, old hero. Use Divide and Conquer tactics on the next enemy. Hmm. Yeah. Alright, but, uh, I believe they're, they're the same slugs, but these ones, they don't seem to drop the sticky white stuff that the other ones did. So, right, there's a message there and it just disappeared. That's very weird. Okay, yeah. So up ahead, there are two giant depra depraved ones. Um, if you're at pure black world tendency, there will also be a black phantom giant depraved one. You know, which is f super fun to deal with. Um, so I recommend um, cheesing these guys. I do not, I do not care about um, other tactics or anything that would be, like, dishonorable or anything like that. No. Be pragmatic as possible. Giant depraved ones are the worst. Like, the literal worst. So, never fight them fairly, because they don't fight you fairly. Oh, come on. Oh, crap, baskets. Okay. One down, one to go. And then there's also a guy over there that's glowing. Um, if you Once you get closer, you'll notice that it's a depraved one, or it looks like a depraved one as well. Um, that is a shaman, actually, and he will use magic as you get close to him. Uh, specifically, he'll try to use um, Poison Cloud, or I forget the other name of it, but it's basically the... A plague version of Poison Cloud. Uh, so, a cloud of plague. Ugh. And then there are part. I noticed. I just noticed. There are parts of the swamp that have more. Um, more of a sickly look to them than the rest. I don't know if you get the plague from those, or it's just, if, it, if it's a more deadly version of toxic, or what, or poison, or whatever. Ugh. 
I don't know, I didn't try and walk into them. I probably should have, since this is supposed to be a pretty, uh, semi-thorough playthrough of the demon's souls. But I just didn't feel like it. Run away. Oh my gosh. Oh. You're gonna be persistent, aren't you? Okay, fine. I'll try fighting you. Eh. 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 I wish the kick button had a dead... Well, I wish there was a dedicated kick button, because the number of times I've accidentally kicked rather than doing the thingy I was supposed to do, which or wanted to do, which is just a regular attack, ugh, I can never get into the right mindset for that. Anyway, let's go deal with that shaman, shall we? Uh, you'll find a valuable weapon pass here. Well, you're not wrong. Yeah. So through that fog gate as the next part of the level to get to the next boss. But if you veer off to the left just a bit, you'll find some mosquitoes and more importantly, another, um, another path outside of the swamp or above the swamp. Um, ooh, marrow stone. Yay. Anyway, um... Uh, yeah, so you'll find this part that goes above the swamp and a storied hero's soul. Ooh. Alright, so we got our poison cured. So next, let's just keep running along. Yeah, and for this part of the swamp, we're not going to be dealing with depraved ones, but with slugs. Again, I recommend using a bow, not because it's the easiest way to deal with them, or it's the easiest way for me, but that's not the point, but because it's um, the safest. Um, I, I don't know about other players, but for me, whenever I have to do melee attacks in such a uh, precarious position, uh, I tend to get a little bit overzealous. And that's usually after trying to be careful, too. But since you can use a bow with a limited range of movement, your character shouldn't be in any danger of falling off while you're firing it. Eh. Alright, yeah, and here we are. Okay, so let's shoot this guy down. And then... Let's try and just shoot this thingy. It looks like a mass conglomeration of slugs. And shooting it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Ugh, I didn't want to have to go up there and hit it, but I guess I'm going to have to. Alright. Well, let's take these other slugs out first. That way we don't have to worry about them. Oh crap, I just noticed there's an item down there. Okay. Read message. Item! Yeah, so hit hit the slug thingy, and that will knock an item down. And I actually didn't notice this, but there is a shortcut you can take by dropping down on the right there. Uh, I forgot about it, but it is a shortcut. I end up taking the long way, so I'll see you back there where the slugs fell down. All right, here we are. So yeah, lots of slugs. Again, the safest way to deal with them is to use a bow, but that takes very long. Um, for you folks that uh, specialize in magic, um, uh, the spell you can get with the Dragon God Soul, uh, Firestorm, I believe, um, it would be very useful for clearing them all out. Although, that said, you can't actually get Firestorm uh, without going to the third part of Boletaria. So, if you haven't slayed an Archdemon and done that yet, then you can't um, use Firestorm. Or probably wouldn't have Firestorm. Ow. Alright, so, yeah, let's just go ahead and try to uh, get in there. It's always tricky to be able to deal with enemies in the swamp, because my first instinct is always to just roll. Blocking with a shield usually isn't that reliable. Ah, ow. I was healing you, meanie poo-poo head! Alright. Ew, this light moon grass is not healing enough anymore. Hmm. Although, speaking of healing, that actually reminds me of a thing I should have mentioned a very long time ago. 
but the ad best advice I've seen for leveling up in Dark Souls, or how to invest your, or what to invest in, um, I think I already, actually I did think I already talked about this a little bit, well, just in case not, um, it's always best to start off getting the minimum stat requirements you need for other things. So in my case, I got I went for the strength I needed to use my um, katana, the main katana I'm going to be switching to a little bit later, and the faith, the amount of faith and intelligence I need in order to cast second chance. Because believe me, that is a very useful miracle to have uh, ready to go on you at all times. All right, here we are. So this is the moon, large sort of moonlight. All right, but before we go into that, um, the other thing to mention is that uh, um, once you've met the minimum stat requirements you need for using your weapons and stuff, from there you want to level up your, um, uh, you want to level up your health, so that way you have at least, um, well, the value I aim for is usually 30, but you want to level up your health to whatever amount you want to aim for um, after you meet your minimum stat requirements. Because that is the easiest and most useful way to handle it. Alright, anyway, now that we've gone through the fog gate, we're safe. Ooh, look, the filthy woman. She's relocated. Hey, I know you. Won't you buy something? My poor child is sick. He needs your help. This place, it's a proper mound of rubbish. All the rot of the world, living or not, ends up here. I thank the stars that I still have my boy. Eh, well, I suppose it's good that you have someone to care for. Uh, we never get to see her child, so I have no idea if she's making it up or not. Alright, anyway, anyway... I'm gonna go ahead and buy a bunch of rotten arrows from her. Finished already. I only want my dear boy to be happy. Rotten arrows are very, very handy, and I think she is the only one who sells them. Alright, let's see. What else was I gonna do? Alright. Alright. But yeah, that fly, bu buzzing noise is getting on my nerves. Hmm. Anyway, I, 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 I think I forget to look at the item description, at least right now, but for the, um... Large sort of moonlight that we picked up. It's ac um, it's actually the weapon for one of the um, knights that was accompanying Maiden Astraea, um, the sixth saint of the uh, church of whatever the religion is called. Uh, she came to the Valley of Defilement when the fog rolled in to try and... Or I think she actually arrived before the fog rolled in to try and help the people here, and then she um, stayed once, once the demons started showing up to continue to try and help the people here. Anyway, she was accompanied by a, by a bunch of knights, so I guess that is the um, explanation for all the holy stuff being here, is that uh, since they were all holy knights, um, they, are gear, they dropped their gear and stuff when they died. But um, uh, the holy sword of moonlight belonged to one of the more prominent knights, whose name I forgot. Um, he died, and he was uh, 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 eaten by all those slugs. There is one other knight whose weapon we can find in the first part of the level. Um, well, yeah, the first part of the Valley of Defilement. Um, however, you need to have pure white world tendency to get it, so I'll be showing that off later. But the reason to sh bring it up now is because um, that knight, uh, they ended up dying, and their body fell into a pile of leeches. And then when the fog rolled in, those leeches became imbued with soul power, and that is how the demon leechmonger was born. So, uh, yeah, so it's a very interesting little tidbit that the demons, uh, a lot of the demons we fight, they end up being um, corrupted versions of certain people, or specific people. Uh, some of them, anyway. Not always. Alright, can I climb up there? No. No, I cannot. Alright. Yeah, and then... Um, this... I actually do enjoy this part of the um, Valley of Defilement, because it's quite clear that we've arrived in a settlement. A lot of the um, depraved ones that we run into here, they're... 
uh, they're clearly trying to, uh, or rather, they're clearly placed so that way they look like they're in homes. And a lot of these um, stacks of rubble are shaped in such a way that they resemble what, what a house would be. So very, very, very interesting that we're essentially exploring a city here. A shanty town, but it's a city nonetheless. And, yeah, the, it's just the horrible conditions that these people live in. Just, oof. I wonder how much of this is due to the demons invading, because honestly... Wait, I... Did, did, I just came from this way. Gosh darn it all to heck. Where did you come from? Ow. Yeah, that push thing that they do is very annoying. Um, but I think they have a... Um, push attack that will always knock you back to make it more dangerous to go through the parts where you can fall off. Especially in the first part of the Valley of Defilement. It's not so dangerous here, but if they knock you into the swamp, it can be difficult to recover. Although I think you can just climb up right there, so... Um, yeah. Yeah, and I think it would have been possible to actually, um, take the... take another way around and go the opposite direction than I did and, uh, get up to this shanty town. Uh, over here instead of um, instead of the direction I came from. That makes it tough to interact with the filthy woman and buy stuff from her if you want it, but it is an option. I don't know if it's faster or not, but it is, it is there. I wouldn't recommend it too much because I think there are more giant depraved ones over there. And there might have been a way for me to avoid the ones I ran into, but I don't know for sure. Uh, anyway... I'll try shooting this guy. Pew! Pew! Alright, alright. Let's see. Let's keep going. Keep going. Hmm. I thought I heard something. I definitely heard something. Yeah, so I believe that was the poison cloud spell. Uh, definitely a lot more dangerous to deal with now that we're not in the swamp and are more susceptible to being poisoned. Or, or actually, we're less susceptible to being poisoned. So it's more dangerous now because we're not uh, guaranteed to be poisoned at this point. So and that can be a little bit tedious. No, you don't. Jerk face. Oh, he dropped something. I wonder what he dropped. Old Spice! Woo! It's always good to carry spice with you. If I was smart, I would have popped some spice so that way I can cast Second Chance again. But I guess the idea was I just have it on me, so... Alright. Hmm. Anyway, you'll find love past here. I love love. Love is the best thing to ever love. Alright, so, yeah, let's just keep going this direction. Yeah, I would highly, highly recommend, uh, beware of the enemy's staggering attacks. Okay, good to know. Anyway, I would highly recommend taking this path before you, uh, go any farther into the level or try exploring anywhere or anything like that. Um, and the reason why you want to go up here is, of course, very important coward. I'm not a coward. Well, actually, I am a coward. Anyway, I think they put that message there because there's, you can see some giant depraved ones a little ways off, and from up here you can easily shoot them dead. And then that makes it easier to go down and grab those items they're guarding. That said, uh, despite how much I encourage cheese tactics like that, it's probably actually in your best interest to avoid cheese, trying to cheese enemies as much as possible, since it makes it more and more difficult to get into the groove of fighting them all normal-like. So, since I, since I tend to try and shoot people as often as possible, I'm not as good in melee combat as I probably would be if I was, um... If I was trying to fight these enemies more often in melee combat. Or at least that's what I tell myself, but but I, I'm not too sure. Um, honest, honestly, uh, trying to get better at do the melee part through trial and error doesn't sound very appealing to me, considering the harsh penalties for death. Hmm. Oh, well that one's a goner. 
All right, but yeah, so this is the bridge near where we initially dropped down, or that's where that bridge connects. So now we have a shortcut directly to the end of the Valley of Defilement, or this part of the Valley of Defilement. So we can very easily get from Leechmonger's Archstone to the end of this one uh, if we happen to have trouble with the boss. Very, very useful. And yeah, the reason why we can't just go right from there instead of all the way around like I did, it's because there's a part of, there's a makeshift wall in the way. <sighs> anyway. <sighs> Sorry, I'm very yawny. Anyway, I don't know what items those giant depraved ones are, are guarding, and I don't intend to find out, because I really just don't want to. Yeah. The Valley of Defilement is just so horrible that I want to get out of here as soon as possible. And I'm going to do that by killing this guy. I think he drops an important item. Maybe. I don't remember too well. But let's go ahead and... Um, yeah, I think there's a way back up close to here. So let's just do that. So first, uh, the unknown hero's soul. And then... Ah, uh, yes, I was right. So that guy, he drops the shaman set. Um... There is one prominent NPC I'll get to introduce you to later that wears the shaman set. Ugh. The flies. The flies! Ooh, dark moon grass. Very useful item to pick up here. Um, I don't know if I've already covered it, but dark moon grass, that heals your status conditions and fully restores your hit points. Okay, so yeah, you can just crawl back right up there. Good to know. There we go. Royal Lotus. And we're we're all set. Alright, so now we're back in the shanty town and the boss should be nearby. Um Oh. Wait, I gotta go up a floor. Ma B. That was Ma B. I'm very curious to see how they're going to remaster this area. Um because um as you can tell that there has been a constant rain effect going on, and I think that's to um, put in a draw distance so that way you can't see everything all at once. Uh, the Valley of Defilement definitely comes across as a lot more dangerous since you can't see as far as far out as you can could if it was bright and, you know, daytime. Am I being followed? Because I keep hearing noises. And I have no idea if if I'm being followed or not. It's really tough to tell. Hmm. Alright, well, you know what? Let's just go ahead and grab this one. A Shotel. Aha. So the Shotel, I believe that is a very interesting weapon. Um, Demon Souls actually has a lot of weapons that are similar to it, if I've if I'm remembering it correctly, but it's a weapon type they've used less and less over time, or in later Dark Souls entries. Um, it's a weapon that I believe ignores shields and will still deal significant damage even if it's blocked. Um, the Great Sword of Moonlight that we picked up, it's Demon Souls Incarnation, it does the same thing. It completely ignores shields. Alright. Oh my gosh, look at that big boy. So this is the Dirty Colossus. Um, he's not too difficult. Um, he's got a big arm he tries to hit you with, and, um... At range, he shoots a giant mass of flies at you. Ow. So, with the Dirty Colossus, the main thing that goes on here is that if you get covered in flies from one, one of his attacks, uh, you can run, your, run into a fire and that'll burn all the flies off. So, so the Dirty Colossus is an encounter for... for um, or rather, the main thing going for it is that you have to, um, is that you just want to keep your surroundings in mind and use them to the best of your abilities. One other thing to keep in mind about the, um, Dirty Colossus is that, um, he is most likely, I, I do believe there are some lore that might confirm it, but I don't remember specifically, but he is most likely the knight who used to wield the Great Sword of Moonlight. And this is his, um, this is what he became after the demon fog came about, and he was killed by all those uh, weird slug thingies.
And the Great Sword of Moonlight in this game, um, I was going over it a bit. Um, like I said, it was one of the weapons in this game that completely ignores shields. And a part of that, or the big reason for that, is that the weapon isn't actually there. Um, if you equip it, and I think I do show it off later, the Great Sword of Moonlight is actually very translucent. You can see right through it. And I, um, the blade seems to exist because the character believes it does. So, um... So it's basically like a, um, well, I don't know what the right word is, but it's t a sword that isn't actually there, but it is just because you believe it is. Eh, which is neat. A very neat concept for a weapon. And yay, we defeated the demon! Ooh, what's that? Yeah, the Dirty Colossus isn't all that difficult, uh, since you can bait it into using melee attacks, uh, melee attacks that are very easy to dodge. It's, uh, very, very easy to handle. Right, anyway. Ooh, the eroded demon soul. Very nice. So let's head on back to the Nexus. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and call that here. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time.